Hey guys, we have another new design on the Union Teespring shop called True King. It's a design based on the King card. It comes in a variety of different colors. You can also buy this as a sticker as well. If you wish to purchase this design, link will be down below in the description. What is going on ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Prodigy and welcome to yet another Kingdom Hearts video on the channel. Today guys we're going to be covering more of the Kingdom Hearts series character files which covers your favorite and most beloved characters from the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Today guys we're going to be covering two stories actually, two stories that I know a lot of you have been anticipating and I hope they don't disappoint. Today we're going to be covering Master Ericus's story and Master Xehanort's stories. The reason I'm doing both of these in one video instead of having them separate is because Master Ericus's story is actually very short while Xehanort's on the other hand is a, a decent length. It's not too long actually. It's very long as I'm scrolling through this. Either way though we're going to be covering both of them so that means this video is going to be a little bit on the lengthy side after i cover one story i'll give my thoughts on that story and then i'll cover the other one give my thoughts on that one then both of them as a whole so without further ado we're going to be covering master ericus's story first perpetual check have you heard of the ancient keyblade war we used to have all kinds of conversations over the game board. The game had many different pieces. It was connected to our training. We were still young, and together we devoted ourselves to our studies. But before I knew it, we had somehow stepped onto different paths. Despite this, over the long months and years, we crossed each other many times. Our weak relationship never quite fading. He was my friend, you see, or at least I thought so. How many years ago was it now that you fired that black miasma from your keyblade and scarred my face? I don't know if I said that word right. That power. Has the darkness taken you, Xehanort? Not your concern, you said, as you turned your back and left. Your drive to learn more about the world led you to fall to darkness and made you seek the Keyblade and Kingdom Hearts. You'd said darkness is a beginning and that the world itself was born from it. But even if that were true, we cannot allow the world to return there. I wonder if the measures I put in place to stop you worked, Xehanort. I was always by your side. Wait, what? What measures? Does he mean Terra, maybe? Sora? I'm very confused by that line. I'm also very interested in another line in this story about how he calls their relationship pretty weak. I mean, that would make sense because from what we know in Birth by Sleep, Xehanort and Ericus hadn't seen each other in years. It seemed like they might have been pretty close as kids, but as they grew older, they quickly went down different paths. Ericus going down the path of light and Xehanort going down a path of what seemed to be dark at the time. So I'm curious about these measures that Eric has put in place. However though, despite all of that stuff, despite all the questions, I'm sure that they're leaving a lot out of Ericus's story at the moment because I'm sure he's going to have a heavy role in Dark Road and we're going to get a lot of information about him there. So they probably don't want to spoil anything or want to really give us any insight or any theories, snippets in this story because they want to save everything for Dark Road, which makes a lot of sense or for whatever Kingdom Hearts game also comes next because I'm sure that even after Dark Road they were probably going to have Xehanort and Ericus reference quite a lot. Ericus is a character that has always interested me. Um, he doesn't have the most tremendous role or anything in the Kingdom Hearts series. He is Aqua, Terra, and Ven's master. We know that he did grow up in Scarlet Kylum with Xehanort. They both trained together there, assumingly under the same master. Played a lot of chess some very weird games of chess as well but that's really about it he's alluded to be very important but we have yet to see exactly what his importance you know holds but i'm sure that his importance is uh pretty great. I feel like Ericus has a lot of secrets that he's holding from us, a lot of knowledge about the world of light, the realm of light that only he knows about. He entrusted some of that knowledge to Master Aqua, but I'm sure there's even more that we can find out about him going further. And I really am excited for them to explore that because I think Ericus is a very interesting character. I mean, like, they got Mark Hamill to voice Ericus. Like, I think that's a pretty big deal, don't you think? Anyways, though, uh, let's move on to Master Master Xehanort story, my dear old friend. This world is just too small. Nothing but the blue sea, 
the blue sky, and the white sand. I wanted to get away from that world. I left my home to travel due to guidance from the future, and on my journey towards him, I brushed with darkness several times. If you can control it, the darkness is nothing to fear. That's why I thought. I'd spent some time training. I had a friend. His name was Ericus, a special Keyblade wielder whose veins flowed with the blood of the very first generation of Masters. Ooh, that's interesting. They confirmed that. The first generation of Masters from the Age of Fairy Tales. It had been promised to him from birth that he would one day wield a keyblade, a completely different world from mine. I didn't want to chase after him. I wanted to be someone who could walk shoulder to shoulder with him. We had all sorts of conversations over the game board. Sometimes we spoke of our training itself. Sometimes we talked about what we ought to strive toward. Have you heard of the ancient keyblade war? I moved a piece and captured one belonging to Ericus. Huh? Of course I have. Ericus moved a piece then and captured one of mine. Long ago, Kila Wooders waged a war over the ownership of light. I moved another piece. That was how this game worked. You moved the pieces again and again. Yeah, the master's favorite story. I wonder what they planned on doing with Kingdom Hearts after making it appear, I said to Ericus. It was a question I had been mulling over. Who knows? I don't get why anyone would initiate a war. He said, it is certainly difficult to understand, but wars begin because something starts them. They begin for a reason. I had another question for him. So, you know the Lost Masters? Who? Ericus asked, as though he had never heard the words, or as though he was pretending as much. They're the ones who started the Keyblade War. Never heard of them. Where do you hear about that? He replied, and then starred at the board. He seemed to be considering something. Or, I continued, they're the ones for whom the war started. Yes, the Keyblade War was started for the sake of the Lost Masters. Suspicion rose in my heart and I voiced it. You can drop the facade. Facade? On that land shall darkness prevail and light expire. A prospective Keyblade Master should know this. If you say so, Erica shrugged. The gazing eye sees the fate of the world, the future, it's already been written. I looked at the keyblade hanging on the wall. It was a special keyblade, the oldest one, which had been passed down by keyblade masters for generations. After that, I set out on a journey, traveling the worlds alone, in order to prepare myself for the Mark of Mastery examination. I learned many things on that trip. Decades later, we found ourselves on different paths. Wait, Xehanort, he said, stopping me. We had both aged so much already. There is a reason the precepts bar us from such knowledge. Why do you seek the Keyblade? Would you blanket all the worlds in darkness, reduce them to nothing? We were already Keyblade Masters, and he was the protector of that land. Protecting it was the burden of Keyblade Masters, maintaining the balance between light and darkness, and ensuring that this neutral ground would not be abused by using methods that our predecessors had devised. As such, it was he, not I, who was the Keyblade Master they're most suited to protect that land. But darkness did cover the world once, in legend, I tell Ericus as he follows me. We know so little about the Keyblade War, only that it was just the beginning. Amidst that crisis, a precious light was found. It is a curious tale, and one worth exploring. They say ruin brings about creation. So what then would another Keyblade War bring? When the darkness falls, will we be found worthy of the precious light the legend speaks of? I must have these answers. I turn to Ericus. The Keyblade needs to be forged, and with it, the door to the Keyblade War unlocked. That answer was the answer I had reached at the end of a long journey. Fool, you would risk a apocalypse out of sheer curiosity? I will never allow it. Xehanort, not while I live. He was probably right, but there is more than one right answer out there in the world. The concept of being only one right answer is merely a deception. But once again, you have it all wrong, Ericus. I continued. Darkness is a beginning, you see, not an end. At birth, every one of us emerges from darkness into a world of light, do we not? Poetic excuses. The light only shines because there is darkness, and darkness can only exist because there is light. I turned my back on Ericus and began to walk away. If words won't dissuade you, only one thing will. Ericus summoned his keyblade and charged at me. I turned and fired a shot at him. It ravaged his face to be taken down so easily. I wasn't sure I could call him my friend any longer. He shook, clutching his face. That 
power. Has the darkness taken you, Xehanort? Not your concern. I turned my back on Ericus and left that land behind me. I stand on the sands of my home. When the sun goes down on this island, all you can hear is the roar of the waves. I set out from this world once upon a time. Now I am back again, carrying a boy. Why did I choose this place, I wonder? It's because I want to let this boy, who didn't choose for his heart to be tainted by darkness, whose heart is now broken, at least sleep in peace. Perhaps then, a shred of fondness for my home still remains in my heart. But... The boy I thought would never wake again? When I return to this land, Ventus raises a keyblade to the sky. Contrary to my assumption, his heart is not broken after all. There is now no darkness in his heart. That darkness now belongs to another boy. If so, then this means I have within my grasp a boy with the heart of pure light and a boy with the heart of pure darkness. It is exactly as someone had taught me. The light in Ventus is still sleeping. In order to awaken it, it would be best to place him near a very strong source of light. My former friend is a perfect fit. I shall pay him a visit. Everything I have done is for the sake of the Keyblade and for the sake of seeing with my own eyes what lies beyond the Keyblade War. A very interesting story from Master Xehanort, my dear old friend. This story felt very similar to a Xehanort report actually from Birth by Sleep. Now this story was very much on the recap side, though I enjoyed it quite a lot because I just enjoy Xehanort's dialogue in the Kingdom Hearts series and getting any sort of insight into his mind as he's saying some of these words really does just intrigue me and keeps me very immersed. I found the most interesting part of this story to be the part where he talks about his boyhood while he's playing chess games with Ericus. It kind of shows shows you how dangerous a mind that curious can end up being. Sometimes it's kind of just fine to accept things the way they are, rather than needing the answer to every little thing. And I feel like Xehanort is an example of going a little too far with wanting answers to everything. Though I find it interesting that he still held fondness for his homeland and still had light kind of within his heart even after doing everything that he did. He's not innocent by any means, but it still shows that he still has some shred of humanity within his heart. And honestly, those tend to make some of the best villains. I don't really have too much to say about these stories, to be honest. I really enjoyed them, but overall, like, they kind of just gave us a lot of information that we do already know about these characters. Except the part about Ericus' story where he says, I wonder if the measures I put in place to stop you worked. Very curious line indeed. I wonder what measures he meant by that. I think he meant Terra. That's what I think he meant. I feel like he meant Terra. Maybe he meant Terra. Maybe he meant Aqua. Maybe he also included Ventus in that because I'm sure Master Xehanort or Master Ericus wasn't completely oblivious to Ventus just randomly showing up out of nowhere after Xehanort, you know, like had that encounter he had with Ericus, like messing up his face. But that's going to be about it for today's video, though, guys. Uh, leave a comment down below telling what you think about these stories. Which one do you like? more Xehanort or Ericus's? What do you think Ericus means when he talks about the measures he put in place to stop Xehanort? Or what predictions you might have for Ericus's character in the future of the Kingdom Hearts series since he's definitely going to be in Dark Road and is probably going to have a presence like even beyond that in past cutscenes or flashbacks and whatnot. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. I'm very curious. Also additionally, if you enjoyed today's video, you already know what to do. Leave a like, share the video with a friend, or a family member and last but not least if you have not already and want to become a part of the union all you have to do is hit that red little subscribe button down below my name is prodigy and i will talk to you guys soon peace out